What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13 beta 5 to registered developers. Whoa, 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 before you proceed, I just got to tell you guys that I accidentally recorded this video using my internal Mac microphone instead of the studio microphone, which you're hearing right now. So if you're new here, this is normally how good my voice sounds. It doesn't normally sound as bad as it does in this video. So just a heads up, it won't sound this bad again, I promise. And public beta testers, you should be seeing public beta 4 either later today or tomorrow. So of course, in this video, we're going to be talking about all the new features and changes found in beta 5 and there are a lot over 25 of them that i found we're also going to be talking about some bugs the battery life and the performance on beta 4 and more so let's not waste any time let's go ahead and get straight into it so you can see here this update came in at 552 megabytes here on my iphone 10r which did come from developer beta 4 but of course that size will vary depending on your device and what software you are coming from. And if we go ahead and take a look at the build number here, you could see 17A5547D is the build number for developer beta five, and that will be the same build number as public beta four when it does get released. And actually one of the first changes comes within the settings application, and that is the new modem firmware update. So you can see here on the left, I have beta four and beta five here on the right on my 10R. You can see it went from 1.53.02 to 1.54.04 down there at the bottom. So that should solve any kind of LTE issues you may have been having in previous betas. Those always do tend to actually help with connectivity and any kind of drop calls or any kind of issues you're having in general with LTE. So one of the biggest changes here in beta five is actually within the volume indicator. So not only is it a little bit smaller and a little bit more sleek, as you can see here on the right hand side, that's beta five, this is beta four. You may have to see it a couple times to actually see the difference here, uh, but it is a little bit more sleek, a little bit more slim of a profile and also there are now 34 different levels of volume rather than 16. So when you press up and down on the volume, you'll see you'll have a lot more to work with in beta five now of iOS 13. You can have a lot more, you know, it can be a little bit more precise with your volume in beta five compared to beta four. Pretty much every other previous version of iOS only had 16 different levels of volume, but now that's pretty much doubled here with iOS 13 beta five. So very interesting change there. I also noticed how you can actually go up and down in the volume a lot quicker than you could in beta four and any other version. You can see it takes a lot longer than it does now in beta five to go all the way to the max volume all the way down to the minimum volume or no volume there. And that's not even all that's changed in beta five with the volume indicator. Also, when you go down to the minimum volume and to the maximum volume, you will feel a haptic vibration. So you get haptic feedback now with the volume in iOS 13 beta five, but it's only when you go to the minimum and to the maximum, you don't get it for every single press, which I guess could be nice, but it could be a little bit too much and it could wear down your battery. So it's just for those two, but that's still a nice and welcomed change. And another change you'll notice right away with iOS 13 beta five is that the settings application, the padding in between each section has been fixed in beta five. So beta four introduced this really weird look inside the settings application where everything was more spaced out than normal, a lot more padding in each individual section. But you can see now in beta five here on the right that it's back to normal now and it's not so spread out and not so much padding in between each section here. Now inside of settings, if we go to our display and brightness, this is where we change from light mode to dark mode. So previously in iOS 13, when you would switch, it would just do this little automatic switch to dark mode and back to light mode. But now in beta five, you'll notice how we have an animation there. So let me show you these side by side. It's a nice little subtle animation now in beta five when we go from light mode to dark mode and vice versa. So now inside of the music application, when you 3D touch on a song, you will notice a lot of differences here. First of all, you can see that the 3D touch menu, and this isn't just in music, this is throughout iOS now. The share menu or the share sheet now has new icons on the right hand side and you can see that they are actually black instead of red like they were in previous versions of iOS 13. You can also see that they are sectioned off. So we have copy at the top and then view album. You can see it's kind of sectioned off everywhere. Whereas in previous versions of iOS 13, everything was just bunched together. So it's a lot easier to kind of navigate around in iOS 13 beta five. And you also have a new button down there called edit actions instead of just manage like it was in iOS 13 beta four. So definitely a nice change. And this is gonna make things a lot easier 
in the share sheet in iOS 13. Also in the music application, when lyrics aren't available for a song, the lyrics button is grayed out as it should be down in the bottom left hand corner. Whereas in beta four, you can see it shows there, but when you click on it, it just says no lyrics available. So it's kind of misleading and it always led me to believe that there were lyrics available for pretty much every song, but that is not the case. And now with iOS 13 beta five, it makes that more clear. Another welcome change inside of the music application is that the time markers no longer disappear when you're playing a song. So you can see here on the left hand side in iOS 13 beta 4 the time would just disappear as you played the song but if you scrubbed it would show it up again but then it would just disappear after a few seconds but in iOS 13 beta 5 it remains there all the time which I like a lot better and I'm pretty sure most people prefer the new way here in beta 5. I also noticed that the music app in general is a lot more stable than it was on beta 4 so this is beta 4 right here and I'm going to show you guys what happens when you switch a song or when you change around the order of these songs and the up next, pay attention to the cover art of the song that I'm moving. You'll see how it kind of glitches out and it shows a different cover art and then it changes back to the actual cover art. You see that? It did that multiple times. It did that pretty much every time throughout my time using iOS 13 beta 4, but in beta 5, when you do that, you will notice how that doesn't happen one time with any song. It's very stable. It doesn't have all that glitchiness and all that lagginess like we had in beta 4. So the music application definitely got a nice upgrade here in beta five in terms of stability. Now also inside of the control center, you'll notice how the play pause and the previous and next buttons are a little bit smaller. So they have a little bit more of a slim profile here in beta five compared to beta four. And also up in the status bar, you will notice how the text is a little bit more bold. When you have LTE, you will notice how it's a little bit more bold. Also with Wi-Fi, you can even see there with no SIM, it's just slightly bolder than it was on beta four. So now thankfully in iOS 13 beta five, we have the open in new tab option there when 3D touching or long pressing on a link. Whereas in beta four, you guys would know, I talked about this, that never showed up. You can never open a new tab uh, by clicking on that link, which is really annoying. And a lot of people hated that. It was clearly a bug, but that has been fixed here in beta five. Now, if we go to our settings in Wi-Fi, you will notice how the check has been redesigned. So you can see there, it's a slightly new design on the check mark next to my network there. It's not just in the Wi-Fi settings, but it is changed throughout iOS. It's a little bit more, I guess, modern looking. It looks a little bit better to me. It's a little bit bigger, but it looks better to me. Now setting the iPhones aside for a second, I wanna show you guys a cool new feature found in iPad OS. So if we go to our display and brightness settings and then go down to the bottom, you'll notice how we have a new setting now for setting the app icon size. So you can now change it to more or bigger. So it's basically giving you the option to either have more applications on your home screen or to have less applications, but to make the icons bigger. And if we go ahead and click on bigger and go Go back to the home screen you can see that's how our icons look but if we went back to more you can see it looks like that so really good setting you know because not everybody likes having these small icons i know that especially older people who don't have as good a vision uh, so that's definitely a nice feature added here in beta 5 to ipad os all right going back to the iphones if we go to the wallpapers right here you will notice how the wallpapers are now rounded instead of squared off like you can see there. So screenshots in general are now rounded off, the corners are rounded off, rather than just squared off like they were in previous versions of iOS 13. And also when you go to set a wallpaper and do set as both, you will notice how it changes automatically in iOS 13 beta five, whereas there's a slight delay in beta four. And thanks to Michael Billick for pointing that out over on Reddit. So now in the health application, you will notice how we have browse instead of search in beta five. So in beta four, we had search In beta five, we have browse. It takes you to the same location, but it's just been renamed. And also if you go to hearing right here and go down, you will see that the articles have new pictures now. So they say the same thing, but there's a little bit more information down there. And they also have new pictures for understanding hearing loss and why hearing health matters. Now, if we go into the shortcuts application, you'll notice that the automations tab has disappeared in beta five. So it was there in beta four, not here in beta five. That has been confirmed to be coming back, but it is just temporarily disabled in beta five. So now that the YouTube application has been updated, we no longer have the issue with playing videos from playlists. So if you go ahead and load up a video from a playlist, you'll see that all the information in the comments are there. Whereas in previous versions, it would just be blank down there and you wouldn't even be able to see the video that's playing. Playing. It would just be a still of the thumbnail for that video. So I can also confirm that this has been fixed here in beta four as well. So it has nothing to do with beta five, but it has everything to do with YouTube's updates. Now, another fix is inside of the screenshot. So when we go ahead and take a screenshot and go to the screenshot, you will see down in the bottom right, the plus icon is grayed out. 
for some reason, but in beta five, it's back to being accessible there. You can still click on it in beta four. It was just grayed out for some reason, as you can see there, but that has been fixed in beta five. So there were also some bugs that I noticed in beta four that I wanted to talk about. And I submitted most of these to the feedback application, but one of them that just happened to me just yesterday was on a reboot, the applications on the last page of my springboard actually changed spots. So for some reason, the Wi-Fi application there and CarGurus completely flipped spots on my springboard. So that was really weird. I don't think I've ever had that before, but that happened in beta four. Not really a major bug, but that was something that I noticed and I hope that does get fixed with beta five. It's too early to tell just yet though. I did also notice on beta four that my phone would say that I'm screen recording when I was not screen recording. So the icon there in the control center would be filled in like I was screen recording and it would show the icon up in the top, but I wasn't actually screen recording. I also had this really weird bug here in the mail application. You can see it's just a blank screen when I open it up and nothing even shows up. I can't do anything. I'm forced to just force close out of the application. So it's a little early to tell if that's been fixed as well, but that was just another bug that I noticed in beta four. And there were also multiple other bugs, but I will not be showing you guys those until I test them out on beta five to see if they're fixed or not. So now let's talk about the performance performance in iOS 13 beta five. So obviously I've only been using this for a short amount of time, but it feels extremely fluid. The music application is fixed. Apps just feel a lot more fluid than they did before, but I'm guessing there's not really a huge difference in performance going from beta four to beta five, but I did notice a major difference in, like I said, the music application specifically. Now, with that being said, I still do wish that the share sheet just popped up quicker. Sometimes it's a little laggy, uh, not necessarily in the music application, but just throughout iOS, especially in like Safari and applications like that. I would notice that the share sheet just doesn't pop up as quick as I would like it to. So that's something that I would hope that Apple does fix for the final version of iOS 13. There's just a lot of small things that I wish would be fixed, like adding music to playlists and things like that. It's a little bit slow. Uh, I also did notice that the uh, iPhone, my iPhone XS Max would crash sometimes when I would be multitasking. So basically when I would just be swiping my finger down on the bottom, going between applications that usually happen when I would like copy something and then want to go paste it in another application, uh, my phone would just crash, it would respring. That happened a few times over the past week and I will be reporting on if that happens with beta five. So yeah, be on the lookout for that follow-up video where I will be talking about bug fixes and some of the bugs I experienced in beta four and if they have been fixed in beta five. So anyways, Switching gears over to the battery life. Battery life has been great for me on beta four. And I actually posted this screenshot over on Twitter. So most of you guys are following me on Twitter. If not, that link is down in the description below. And you can see I went nearly 20 hours without charging my phone and it got down to a little bit under 10%. But you can see there, I had about five hours and 40 minutes of screen on time and about 10 minutes of screen off time. So 5.39 and nine, which is pretty good. I mean, it's not a lot, but the fact that I didn't have to charge my phone in 20 hours was really impressive for beta software. So I am very pleased with the battery life on beta four. If we go to my last 10 days here, you can see I am using my phone quite a bit. You can see there I'm averaging about 10 hours of screen on time and 50 minutes of screen off time. Uh, and the battery has been great. So I've been using this phone a lot on the beta software and it's actually been performing pretty well. So definitely no complaints with battery and I'm expecting it to be the same here in beta five, which is good. So should you install iOS 13 beta five? And I haven't been using the software for very long, so I would say yes, but if you wanna be on the safe side, wait for my follow-up video in a few days where I confirm that this is, you know, something you should use on your daily driver device. I can't see any reason for it not to be installed on your daily driver device, it seems fine, uh, but you may wanna wait just if you wanna play it safe. But yeah, anyways guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my follow-up video and also beta six. When beta six comes out, I will be covering that and all the new features and changes within it. And if you guys have anything else you wanna share about iOS 13, to five let me know down in the comment section below but anyways guys thanks again for watching the video and i'll see you soon